sometimes when I don't know what to say, I just say too much. I'm glad that they're here. I love I love them both very, very much. Amen. I, I trust them. Second Samuel chapter 6, beginning at verse number 20. I'll give you a moment just to turn there while you're doing that. Um, let me just say that I love all of you very much. I pray for you, pray for your families, and I believe in you. And I believe we have uh, right here, standing in this building today, uh, exactly what we need in order to have a great move of God Amen. and revival in this community. Amen. I believe that's what the Lord wants from us. Right. I believe that's what he expects from us. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel like I have something for you today. And my prayer is, is that God would just help me to uh, give this to you in a plain and simple way. Um, it's not very deep, of course. But uh, I really want you to get a hold of this. And um, I had more notes and was just kind of looking over them and stuff and just again started just cutting uh, cutting things out and trying to simplify it and uh, so I, I pray that we can make sense out of this I pray I didn't cut anything out that needs to be said and hopefully again by the end of this service you're not looking at me thinking man you should have cut more out second uh, Samuel chapter 6 I want to begin at verse number 20 where the Lord says, Then David returned to bless his household. Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. And David said unto Michael, it was before the Lord which chose me before thy father, right. before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord and I will yet be more vile than thus. And will be base in mine own sight and of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of. Of them shall I be had in honor. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child until the day of her death. Yeah. Amen. I, I, didn't, I don't, didn't really have a title per se, um, but just because of some of the things that have already been said, and uh, maybe we'll be able to work this in there somehow or, or another, if the Lord will help me. Uh, we'll just title it uh, Overcoming Average. Come on. Overcoming average. Amen. Lord, we love and appreciate you. We thank you very much. I, I really do want to do a good job today. And I feel like you put some things in my spirit for this service, God. And Lord, I, I want to speak clearly and I want to do it in a way that would edify and encourage your people and perhaps give this church some direction for this new year, God. I'm asking you, Lord, that the people would respond heartily to your word. And I pray, God, that you would allow this service today to have an impact in our lives and our being and our becoming. And if we give you all the praise and the glory for it, and everybody say amen. 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 All right. Look up here and smile. Yes. Amen. I know some of you are going through difficulty, but yes, yes. you know, just, just put on a good smile. Yes. Reach over next to you. Shake somebody by the hand. Tell them, hey, we got to get over average. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many of you want to get God's attention? Yes. I got a, I got a surefire way to get the Lord's attention. If you want to get God's attention, you got to be a worshiper. Not just any kind of worshiper. you got to be a true worshiper. I said the Father seeketh such to worship Him. you got to worship Him in spirit and in truth. 
I don't know if Brother Godair got this from you, Pastor. If he, if he uh, maybe stole this from your message about excellence or whatever. But um, he, he made this statement. He, he said it in a way. He said, you know, one of my fears uh, when it comes to the Pentecostal movement is, is that we got a whole lot of praisers and just a few worshipers. Well, come on. Does anybody know there is a difference? Yeah. I said, God, the Father, is seeking worshipers. People that are willing to put it all on the line. They're not worried about what it looks like. They're not worried about what it sounds like. They're not worried about what their neighbor thinks. Oh, hallelujah. Are there any true worshipers in this church today? I believe that's how David grabbed a hold of the attention of God because he was a true worshiper. He, he was a man after God's own heart. And bless God, let it be said that there's some true worshipers at Truth Way. Somebody say praise the Lord. I want to I wanna talk to you for a few minutes today because there's something that's kind of been burning me down here the last couple of days. And really it was born out much like much of the the messages and the sermons that I, I, I preach and pray about and I feel that they're, they're born out of conversations that I've had with people and, and I really want to dig down I want to talk about some things today and uh, when I look over the life of David and I consider his worship and I look at him and you know David wasn't the kind of man that was just a worshiper when he was out in public. Right. David was the kind of man that even when he was all by himself, even when he was all alone and it was him and God, he was still worshiping and he was still giving God his very best. He didn't just wait till Sunday to give God his best when everybody's eyeballing him and everybody's listening. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, if you want to be a true worshiper, you can't just put on a show when somebody's watching, but you've got to be willing to give God your best. He wasn't just a worshiper. He was a worshiper in public. But more importantly, he was a worshiper in private. My Lord. Hallelujah. He wasn't ashamed to express his devotion to God when there were people around him. And he, I, he, told, he told that woman, he said, I'll be more... You, my God, you haven't seen nothing yet. I'll be more vile next opportunity I get. Oh, you think I was putting on a show today, baby? You wait till I get another opportunity. Hallelujah. And so David's public display of his affection toward God I want to tell you, it was birthed in what David was doing when he was in private. It went back further than when David was out and about and the people thought highly of him and they saw him and they considered him high and esteemed above most others. He didn't wait till he got in front of the, the people. What he was doing in public. The origins of that came when he was in private, Sister Eileen, and nobody was around watching and listening. Hallelujah. Can I tell you today that what you do in public is, is birthed by what you're doing when you're in secret. You see, what you do in private is going to be revealed. Yeah. Come on, come on. I, I believe the Lord told us, he said, my father seeth in secret. Yeah. 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 And the things that he sees in secret, he's going to be, he's going to reward you in the end. And so the things that you're doing behind closed doors are going to be revealed and displayed out in the open for everybody to see. Shouted from the rooftop, if you will. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say amen. I was, I was, my God. I, I'm going to get a little mad here. I feel it. I don't want to. Let me, let me try to. Hallelujah. 
I, I just really want to get down to it today. I, you know what? I, I have heard way too many people say, well, I, I just can't feel God the way I used to. Oh, come on. I, I, more than one have told me, literally, they have told me. I'll, I'm not making this up. But I've had more than one people tell me, well, I just feel like Saul and I feel like God has withdrew his presence from me. And I just can't feel God like, like I used to feel. Let me tell you something. That's a scary. I don't ever want to know what it feels like. Hallelujah. To even think. I shudder to think what that would feel like for the spirit of God to withdraw. Hallelujah. But I'll tell you. I'll tell you how to get to that place. You be more concerned with what people think about you than what God thinks about you. If you ever want to get to the place, and I don't believe any of you do, where you feel like the Spirit of God has withdrawn Himself from you, you get to the place where you're more interested in what people think than what God thinks about you. You get to the place where you're more interested in putting on a public show for the sake of the people than taking care of God's business when you're in the private. I'm going to talk about that for a few minutes today if you'll, you'll just hold tight with me. Hallelujah. I say, you, hey, you got you to gotta have a public walk with God. But that public walk with God has got to be born in a place of private. It's got to be born in a place where it's just you and God. And you're not putting on a show for anybody. You're not doing it so somebody will pass you on the back. And oh, well, 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 See, your, your motivation is going to determine the reward. Is that not Bible? There's a lot of people they want to. Come on. They want to flash it. Yeah. Hey, look what I'm giving. Yeah. Your motivation is going to determine the reward. Those Pharisees, they wanted the best seat in the house. They prayed with one eye open, out loud, so that everybody would hear them and everybody would see them. Woo, brother, you sure are spiritual, man. I love the way you... Hey, there's nothing wrong with praying out loud. I think you should. But your motivation is going to determine the reward. If you're doing it because you want men to think you're spiritual, because you want somebody to come along and pat you on the back and say, wow, what a great Christian you are, you've just received your reward. You get your reward in this life and miss out on the reward in the next. But bless God. Hey, if your public walk with God has been born in a private place and you're not doing it for a show and you're not doing it to please men, but you're doing it with the motivation that I just want to please God. Oh, does anybody else, do you even understand a little bit of what I'm talking about so far? Praise God. You want to get to that place where, where you feel like the spirit has withdrew from you and you can't feel God's spirit like you used to? You have you a public walk with God that's not backed up with a private walk with God. You put on a display in the show when you're at church and then you go home and but you just sit there and wait till next service. Oh my God. And there's no private devotion that backs up your public display. Does that make any kind of sense at all? Does anybody want to be effective this year? Does anybody want to win souls this year? Does anybody want to... Oh, hallelujah. Pray effectual and fervent prayers of the righteous. Hallelujah. Hey, can I tell you that being effective is the result of what you do in private more than what you do when you're in the public? Does that, does that make sense to you? I want this to be a powerful church. I want this to be a revival church. I want this church to have authority 
and power and dominion. But can I tell you, all of that is going to be the result of what we do not when we're gathered together publicly or collectively. But it's the result of what you do when you're at home and nobody's around listening and watching. Hallelujah. See, there's a lot of people that have a form of godliness when they're out in the public. But the reason why they don't have the power thereof is because they don't back up their public life with a private walk with God. And so they have a form of godliness without the power thereof. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So uh, just for a few minutes today, and I'm not going to belabor this. I want to get through this fairly quickly. But I want to look at, at these two men, these, these, these two men that con contrast one another, uh, Saul and David. See, Saul, while he did start out well, he started out on track at some point, he got to where he was more interested in what the people thought about him than what God thought about him. He got to the place where he was willing to display a walk with God when he was out in the public, but wasn't backing it up when he was in private. Uh, I want to move ahead. I want to move along pretty pretty quickly here. Uh, just listen. You're familiar with the story. Please don't make me just go through all of this. Let me just kind of hasten. You're familiar with the story when, when the Lord speaks to him through Samuel and tells him to go go and utterly destroy the Amalekites and, and, and all that's taking place. Let's just kind of fast forward a little bit. Now Samuel's coming and he, he hears the bleeding of the sheep and the lowing of the oxen and, and he comes he comes to Saul and he begins to question him about these things and, and listen to what Saul said while he was making excuses for his failure. He said to Samuel, I have sinned. Well, that's a good start, right? He said, I have sinned for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord. That's good. He recognizes that. That's, that's great. He said, I, I've transgressed God's commandment and Pastor, I even, I even transgressed your commandment. Uh, Thy words, mm -hmm. Samuel. This is First Samuel 15 and 24. So all that's good. He, I, I sinned. He, he felt remorse. He felt sorry. I've transgressed the commandment of the Lord. I, I've even gone against your words, man of God. And then, and then listen to this, because I think this kind of gives us a little insight into the mentality of Saul at this time. He says, because I sinned and I transgressed the, the law of God and, and I even went against my pastor's own preaching and because I feared the people and I obeyed their voice. Now you got to understand just a few verses before this, Samuel, he chastises him, he, he corrects him and he's telling him, he says, uh, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. And, 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 and don't you know, uh, Saul obeyed. And he did hearken. He just obeyed the wrong voices. He hearkened to the wrong voices. He, he obeyed the people and not... Oh, hallelujah. Verse 25, listen to what Saul, Saul said. He said, pardon my sin and turn again with me that... You hear that? Pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. It sounds great, doesn't it? Walk with me, Samuel. Turn aside. Come on with me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, Now, I will not return with thee. You have rejected the word of the Lord. And the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle and it rent. 
Samuel said, the Lord has rent the kingdom of Israel from wow. thee this day. And hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better. Talking about that contrast. Yes, yes, yes. He's given it to a neighbor that is better. Hey, can I tell you, every single one of us is replaceable. Amen. You better back your public devotion, your public walk with God up with something you're doing in the private. Because every one of us can be replaced. He goes on, he says, and also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Then Saul said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee. Before, listen to this, before the elders of my people and before Israel and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord thy God. So Samuel turned again after Saul and Saul worshiped the Lord. You read that carefully and you're going to find out that Saul was more interested in what the people thought about him than what God thought about him. He was more concerned with what the people were going to see, talking about his display and, and his presentation. And Oh, Samuel, would you turn with me? Would you walk with me? Let's go worship the Lord together. Let's put on a show for the people to see. Turn with me, man of God. Walk beside me, pastor. Give me honor in the presence of the elders of my people. Show me a little bit of respect in front of the people of Israel. Somebody say amen. 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 See, the burden that has been placed upon my spirit over the last few days is I see people that are willing to put on a show when everybody's looking. They've got that same mindset as Saul. Well, if you'll just walk with me, man of God, if I could just put on a show when everybody's watching and everybody thinks that I'm a man of God, approved of God. Doesn't matter if I really am. If I could just get you to think that God approves of me. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a my God, even within Pentecostal churches, sitting on Pentecostal church pews, there's people that show up. And they display their public walk with God. And then they have... Uh, are you hearing me today? I'm trying to motivate somebody. I'm trying to challenge somebody. Hey, if we want 2023 to be the best year that we've ever had so far. A year of revival and a year of growth. Hallelujah. It's not going to take place necessarily by what happens on Sunday afternoons. But it's going to be by what takes place Monday through Saturday when you are all... By when you don't have somebody laying hands on your head. When you don't have somebody huddling up next to you saying, hey, you can make it. Hey, let's pray. What? My God, it's going to take place when we get a hold of God. And we... Yes. Hallelujah. You see, the contrast was David. A man after God's own heart. A man who had a public walk with God that was founded from a private walk with God. It wasn't a pretense. It wasn't a show. Somebody say amen. Praise God. Come on. That's why I tell my children. I say, look, if you're not willing to put in the practice when nobody's watching. You're never going to be able to stand before the crowd and put on the show. Before David ever sang or played for the crowd, by God, he sang and played for an audience of one. Before he ever thumbed that harp in the presence of of a congregation or in the presence of King Saul. He was out there on that hillside looking up over into them starry skies and he, he, he began to sing to the Lord when 
that I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before he ever slung a stone at a giant. Before he ever took down a bear or a lion. When nobody was around watching him, cheering him on. He was in private. I don't know, maybe he was just slinging stones at an old stump or something. Somebody say praise the Lord. Before you ever get up here and you sing your solo. You better have a private life that's backing up what you want to put on in front of Somebody say amen. Amen. That's what made David a man after God's own heart. Hallelujah. It wasn't necessarily what, what David was putting on in front of the people, but it was because the show and the, the presentation that, that David was unashamedly doing while people were watching was backed up by what David had already done when nobody was watching. Hallelujah. That's why David was unashamed. He didn't care what it looked like. Yeah. Bless God. Hey, look, let me tell you something. I know sometimes I get crazy and I shout and I dance and, and I may even roll on the floor and do all kind of stuff that makes me look foolish. Come on. Yeah. Michael thought that way. Uh -huh. Come on. She thought he was look make what a fool you've made yeah. of yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But let me tell you something. Before I ever made a fool out of myself in front of you, I was in a prayer room. Hey, when nobody else was around, I was up in front of, in, in, the, in the sanctuary, at the front of the church. Hallelujah. And I was putting on a show for an audience of just one. Praise God. And I'm not, hey, I'm not telling you this so that you'll pat me on the back. I, I don't want your reward. I'm doing it for God. Yeah. Praise God. I, you know what? I always kind of wondered, you know, if uh, I'd go over there to the church over in Pineville and I'd be praying and I'd always wonder, you know, if pastor would be on his phone watching me from them cameras back there. I don't, he, he don't have time for that. I don't, right. You know, I'm just being silly. But the point is, is the things that we do in public, they better be backed up. They better be founded in the things that we do when we're in private. Hallelujah. Come on, who are you trying to please? You trying to get man's approval? You trying to get pastor to pat you on the back and think, well, you're doing so good? Or are we doing this for God? Somebody, hallelujah. How glorious was the king of Israel today? Who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants as one of the vain fellows. Shamelessly uncovereth himself. She had the same mentality as her daddy. She picked up on that same, that same way of thinking that Saul had. Only concerned about what the people thought about her husband. You're making a fool of yourself out in front of your servants and your subjects today. What were you thinking? Yes, come on. Yes, come on. Hallelujah. We're dignified. Yes. We don't act like that in front of people. But what she didn't know is David wasn't putting on an act. Hey, right. Saul may have been putting on a show. Right. Saul may have been putting on an act. Her daddy may have been doing that for the eyes of the people to see it. But not David. David said, honey, hey, regardless of the way you think it looked, I'll be more vile next time. You thought that looked crazy when I danced, when I shouted. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Let's all stand. I'm a hallelujah. Hey, let me tell you something, mama and daddy or grandma or grandpa. Your children observe a whole lot more than you think they do. They're watching you. Yes, they are. I sure hope they don't see you come and cut up at church and then go home and act like a heathen. Pass 
pastor get up here and he start hammering on some things like Hollywood. And you're back there going, amen, preach it, pastor. And then you go home and. Come on. Maybe it's not with a remote in your hand. Maybe it's just with one of these. Oh, my Lord. Lord. Pastor, I still, we ought to do screen free in 23. I guess, I think that's, my God. You want to overcome average? Do screen free in 23. Praise the Lord. I, hey, I'll just circle back to what I said earlier. I think it's time for some men to grow up and put away childish things. Well, Hallelujah. Hey, I've heard you. I've heard you beating down video games. Praise God. Let me tell you something. I'll, I'll be transparent with you. My daddy struggles with that still. A sixty-year-old man playing video games. Don't you think that that that, that hadn't tried to get on me? I've struggled with it. But screen free in 23. I want, hey, I don't want to just be average. I don't want to be the best of the worst. And let God, I don't want to be the worst of the best. I want to get as high as I can. I want to be the best of the best, Ian. Anybody else feel that way? Hallelujah. You look at the life of Christ. What a, what, a, what a man. Can I, just, can I just speak to his humanity for a second? <laughs> Jesus had a powerful public ministry that resulted from what he did when his disciples weren't around. When he did not have multitudes crowding and thronging him. The Bible speaks of multiple times where he escaped and went off into a mountain to pray. His public ministry, I'm speaking to his humanity, his public ministry was the result of what he was doing when nobody was around. When they were around and he went to go pray, the Bible says he went a little further. Yes, he did. I got I to gotta get away for a little while. Hallelujah. Then you look at the Bible says he was driven into the wilderness. Alone. By himself. Bless God, every single one of us are going to go through that wilderness. And guess what? When, when he was in his wilderness, oh, hallelujah. The Bible says the tempter came. Yes, yes, yes. When you're in your private time and nobody is around, I'm telling you, you hey, you, you want this church to be powerful? You want to have revival? I'm going to say it again. It's not going to be what takes place here at 2 o'clock on Sundays. But it's going to be when you're in your private time and the tempter comes and he's looking over your shoulder. Hallelujah. And he's whispering in your ear. My God. Hey, does anybody know what I'm talking about today? Oh, I'm telling somebody the tempter's going to come. He's going to show up. And when he does, he's going to whisper in your ear and he's going to say, hey, you know what? You're all by yourself. Nobody's going to know. You're alone. And what you do in that moment is going to be the catalyst for what happens later. Hallelujah. I feel like maybe I'm, having, I'm struggling a little bit trying to get you to understand what I'm talking about. That tempter came with three temptations. If you are the son of God, then turn these stones into bread. If you just give me a little bit of liberty, maybe, maybe that first temptation is that when you're in private, instead of reading your Bible, 
instead of digging down into the word of God, we're feeding on something else. I'll tell you what's wrong with Pentecost today. We got a whole lot of praisers and not enough worshipers, but I'll tell you what else is wrong with some of us. We're entertaining ourselves to death. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so true. Hallelujah. Turn. Hallelujah. I feel something coming on me right now. And I'm going to make somebody mad. But that's okay. That's okay. Because it's the truth. Turn these stones to bread. And instead of getting in your Bible and reading that word. We just get on Facebook and we, we look at what our favorite friends and these, these preachers or these little one-line quotes, maybe they'll put a scripture on there, and that becomes our daily bread. Well, you're not going to help me. That's okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm there. I'm here. I just fall headlong into it right now. Instead of... Oh, hallelujah. What did Jesus say? He said, for it is written, thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And instead, I'm going to say it again. Instead of getting in God's word, we just get on YouTube. And we are devouring stuff that we can't digest. And we're calling it bread. ain't in my notes, so I'm just going to take this as a, the Bible says holy men spake as they were moved on or directed by the Holy Ghost. You call it what you will. I'm going to say it's God. Hallelujah. Screen free at 23. Leave, leave that junk alone. Let's get in the book. Let's read our Bibles. Let's, let's feast on the word of God. Hey, I'm talking to you about overcoming average. We'll just work that in right here. You want to overcome average? We're going to do it by getting in God's word. You want to please the Lord? We're going to please him by getting in his book. By being a doer of it, not just a hearer. My God. Well. The second temptation. Satan took them up to the pinnacle of the temple. Say, cast yourself down. For it's written. Angels take charge of you. They'll lighten you up. They'll lift you up. You know, I was, I was thinking about this. What is this temptation about? Look, there, you can preach this any way you want to. It doesn't matter to me. But I'm just going to tell you how it applies to this service today. The second temptation was about trying to escape the private life. You take the leap, Jesus. Just, just cast yourself down. And those angels are going to come along and they're going to catch you. And they're going to drop you right in the middle of all of those people down there. Right into the public spotlight. You don't have to do all this private stuff. You don't have to pray. You don't have to read your Bible. You don't have to do all that. We'll just drop you right down into the spotlight. And you can skip all the private stuff and just go straight into your public Everybody will see. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Don't tempt the Lord your God. Hallelujah. What about that third temptation? Satan taking him up into a high mountain. Shows him all the kingdoms of the world. Says, hey, I'll give it all to you. All you got to do is just bow down to me. And I kind of had a difficult time with that one. I don't know. Maybe it was God. Maybe it was my own imagination. I don't know. But I just felt it come on me. I think it's about, I think that temptation is about devotion. Your devotion. What are you going to be devoted to when you're in your private? When nobody else is around he said, worship me. I'll give it all to you. 
thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him alone. You know, the Bible says when he came out of the wilderness, he came out with power. Because how you deal with the private, how what you invest in when you're in that private, what you devote, you, here it is, what you devote yourself to when you're in the private is going to determine how you come out into the public. Come on, lift your hands all over this house. I, look, hey, it's hitting, it's hitting a few of you. It's got to be. Hallelujah. I, hey, if you really want to have a year of revival, hey, if we're, if this is really going to be the best year that we've ever had so far, we've got to get a hold of this. We've got to take this home. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm trying to challenge somebody. This year, let's read our Bibles all the way through. This year, let's fast every week. This year, let's worship the Lord and Him alone. Let's devote ourselves to Him. Let's get off of YouTube. Hey, quit wasting all that time on Facebook. Get into the book. Get into His book. Oh, let's spend time with Him. And you watch when we step out onto the public scene. You watch demonstration. You watch power. You watch dominion. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if we get a hold of this, when we're in the private, I'm telling you, when we walk out into the public, there's going to be a display of God's power. But it's not just going to be the result of what takes place in this altar call today. As you begin to step out and you begin to move to this front. It's not just going to be because we came to a front and we prayed for a few minutes. But it's going to be because you grabbed a hold of this. And you took this thing home. And you wake up early on a Monday morning. Hallelujah. And you have a prayer meeting on Monday. And you get in your word. And you begin to have a devotion with him every day of the week. And I'm telling you. Hallelujah. What we do on Monday through Saturday is going to show up with power on Sunday. Come on, lift your voice. Hallelujah. I'm not asking you to put on a show for anybody. I'm not asking you, hallelujah, to demonstrate how spiritual you are for somebody next to you. But I'm asking you to make a consecration and a commitment. Let's go. Hey, I've got a lot going on. I'm just as busy as the rest of you are. But God, yeah, I want this year to be a year, hallelujah, of revival and power and authority and dominion. Oh. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. God, when I'm all by myself, when nobody's around to encourage me and nobody's around to remind me that I need to pray and I need to read my Bible, God, and Lord, there's nobody around me looking over my shoulder, looking to see what I'm doing on my phone or on my iPad. Hallelujah. God, I want those private moments to be moments, hallelujah, where I'm devoted to you and I'm consecrated to you. And God, I'm committing those moments to you, Lord, so that when, when we are in public worship, oh, something's going to show up that was birthed in a private prayer meeting. When we show up on a Tuesday night and we're praying for people to he be healed, oh, that healing is going to be birthed from a prayer meeting my God that took place when nobody come on somebody pick that up Somebody pick that up and follow. Jesus. Oh, when I'm all by myself. In that wilderness, alone, private place. Oh, God. Help me, Lord, to recognize. Oh, that we're not living by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth. 
Come on, somebody, lift it up, lift it up. God, we love you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Overcoming average, but but overcoming average doesn't take 
place at an altar call on a Sunday afternoon. Overcoming average is going to take place on a Monday morning. On a Tuesday morning. Oh, hey, if you want to overcome average, it's going to take place. My God, when you get a conviction that you know what? I'm not going to wait for the pastor to call a fast day. I've got, I've got to make up that make that decision on my own. We're going to overcome average. We're going to have to lay some things aside. That's why the apostle said, lay aside every weight. And sin that doth so easily beset us. It's hard to overcome average when we're so weighed down with things. Does, it, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I'm not talking about the sin right now. I'm talking about the weights yeah. that prevent us from being better than just good. From being better than just average. Thank you, Ian, for inspiring me. Praise the Lord. Those weights are going to keep us held back. But he said, cast away. Lay aside. Put away the strange gods. That your father served on the other side of the flood. I'm talking about those same spirits. That mama and daddy used to struggle with. And you just hadn't quite been able to shake loose. And get free from those things. And you still struggle with them too. Put them away. Put them away. And the gods. Of the Amorites in whose land we dwell. Put them away he said. Put them away. That's not me saying that. That's, that's the prophet. That's the man of God. That's the word. Put it away. Because we want to be better. We want to overcome average. Why don't we all stand to our feet? Me and Ian were talking about that quote that Brother Godair gave. and Just kind of the, the depth of that. And I was trying to explain to him how, you know, you put put that on a scale. You know, you, you take all your, you know, the, the worst of the best and the best of the worst. And you put that on a scale. Average is right in the middle. And I was, you know, it's, it's funny, but that's why I, I, I tell you all the time. I say, you know what? I, we're not just a midway Pentecostal church. Because that implies being in the middle. It implies being average. We're in all the way Pentecostal church. We're a passionately Pentecostal church. Somebody say amen. I don't want to be average. I don't want to be an average preacher. I don't, I don't want my prayer to be just average. And I want to pray effectual, fervent prayer that availeth much. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to have revival. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I feel good. You know why? Because I have I feel like I've done what I was supposed to do. I prayed. I spent time with the Lord. I feel like this is what he's dropped on me. And so there it is. May not have made a whole lot of sense to anybody. But I feel good. Amen. Why don't we lift our hands all over this house? Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You've been very kind. God, I appreciate you. Let me, let me say this real quick. Brother Dunn, has, I'm, I'm glad he's here. He's been a blessing to me. 
And he has, he's told me a number of times, he said, look, when it comes to stuff like, like what I preach today, he said, look, it's a choice. We can't force nobody into this. I can't, I can't, I'm not going to be there looking over your shoulder, making sure you're praying at home, making sure you're reading all, reading your Bible like you're supposed to, making sure you're, you're doing what, what's right. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. I've told you time and time again, I said, I'm not going to be one of these uh, micromanager pastors that's just involved in every little decision that you make, but I do want to pastor and preach in such a way that you can be challenged and that you you are presented with a choice so that when you leave here today you have a choice before you are you going to be average you going to be below average above average where you want to be and i think i feel like we've got a little bit of direction from the lord because if you want to overcome average there's a few things that i feel like the lord has pointed out today that maybe perhaps if we do some things different we can rise above the mediocre the midwayers I don't want to be a midwayer I want to be an all the wayer a truth wayer somebody say amen, amen. alright very good hey where's some kids at Hey, I'm going to come Thursday night. I'm going to have some more questions for y'all. Y'all better be studying studying that Bible. You never know. Hey, uh, let me think of one real quick. All right. I don't want no mamas and daddies and big adults or whatever to help these kids out. I want them to go home and I want them to figure this out on their own. Okay? You understand? And if you go home and you figure it out and you come back and you tell pastor, I'll give you a prize. Okay? So I'm going to think of a question. It's going to be kind of a hard question, okay? I don't want none of you adults helping them out and giving them the answer, okay? It's going to be a hard question. And so you're going to have to use your brains. And I know y'all are smart, okay? So here's the question. If you can come back Thursday night for Bible study and you can tell me how many of each animal did Moses put on the ark I'll give you a prize don't hey you adults you don't help them you hey you adults you don't help them okay you I want you kids to use your brains and think about that question really hard and you come back and you tell me the answer and I'll give you a prize how many of each animal did Moses put on the ark? You come back with the correct answer, I'll give you a prize. Y'all greet each other.